Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is go over the requirements and the design phase of Canon, our game. Now, the requirements and the design phase are going to apply for all three implementations of Canon. They are not going to change. So once we get the requirements and the design phase etched in right here, they shall remain all the way to the end. So as you progress through the videos, you can come back at any time to this video and confirm how things are going. And everything should line up beautifully. So with that, here's what I'd like to do. Let's go ahead and take just a second and talk about the requirements. So here we go. Very simple paragraph defining canon. Canon is a simple shooter game where a player must shoot an approaching target before it hits the ground. The player has three lives. Each time the target hits the ground, the player will lose a life. Once all lives are gone, the game is over. A very, very simple game. But the amazing thing is, when you step in and you spec the entire thing out on paper before you start coding anything, even though there's not a lot of code, it really does help you visualize the big picture in seeing that there is actually quite a bit that goes on in game design. And that's what's so cool about us picking on a visual game so early on. You guys get to see all of the elements that are involved. So a simple shooter. So yeah, what we're looking for, let's see. Let's do one of those Mythbuster style drawings up here. So we're going to have our game screen. This is going to be our playing field, if you will. We're going to have a simple player, and we're going to have a single target. This single target is going to move in random directions, and we'll talk about all of this in the next part, the actual design phase. But I just wanted to give you kind of an idea right now of what we're shooting for. Because this is what Logan and I did. In coming up with the requirements for the game, Logan and I sat there and was like, all right, we need a very simple visual game. What you think? It needs to be simple. That's the key thing. And so we started talking about different ideas, and Logan came up with this. Let's keep it as simple as possible, just a single player, a single target that we're going to shoot at. We're not even calling it an enemy. It's just a target and a single projectile that we can shoot out of our ship. And, of course, this projectile will simply go in the direction it was fired and hopefully come into contact with our target. Now, the rules are going to be simple, which we're going to define them in just a second. But if our target hits the ground, we're going to end up with three lives. One, two, three. So if it hits the ground, what happens? Well, the player dies. We take a life. Player starts back. And we can begin again. Once we run out of life, game's over. So, again, the requirements, very, very straightforward. Notice there's no warps in here. We're not defining a moving star field in the background. We're not defining the ability for the target to suck up our player. Then we suddenly get another player, and if we can shoot the target, we get two players side by side for double cannon action. We, nothing like that. Very simple requirements. So this is our requirements. Logan, anything you want to add to this? No, not just that. Um, we're defining this as these are our final requirements. That's we're right. not going to change these. And like you were saying, the reason we have these requirements is to keep a very solid idea of what it is we're doing. Instead of going through and piecing this together piece by piece, where we'd end up with a case where we would put warping in. Exactly. And take warping back out. And right. Because <laughs> it didn't really work out for us, not with the model we were coming up with for the code. So, again... This is it. This is what we must define. So a simple shooter game where a player must shoot an approaching target. That's what I've drawn there. Before that target hits the ground. The player has three lives. Each time the target hits the ground, the player will lose a life. Once all the lives are gone, the game is over. Now, how do you win the game? Well, you can't win the game. That's the way that this is. Do we have anything in there that specifies in the requirements how you win? No. There is one more part that we could add if we wanted to go a little bit further, and that is each time we shoot the target, it reappears and moves faster. That's not been defined here. So, I mean, you could just simply shoot the target, target goes away, and the game's over, and that would meet our requirements. But we will go ahead and stipulate that we shoot a target, the target will be destroyed, reappear from the top, or respawn from the top, and, again, begin moving, but perhaps just a little bit faster because you were good enough to shoot it. Sound good? You still can't win. You still can't, yeah, exactly. And again, right here with requirements, there is no, this is how you win. There is no winning to this game. So this is the requirements. Now that we have this locked into stone, here's what I'd like to do. Let's go ahead and jump over here real quick. Let me find my mouse. And let's bring up a whiteboard, something to write with, and perhaps just come in here real quick and switch over to black. All right. 
So, let's do some drawing. Now it's time to talk about the design phase. So instead of giving you a pretty whiteboard for this, let's just come up here. Let's set our focus over here to this area. And this is, again, going to be the design phase. In the design phase, we are interested in coming up with two things. We need to define our game elements. And we're going to need to define our game rules. As you guys saw, we kept our requirement very, very simple. It did not go into all of the different rules, even though, I mean, it defined the overall gameplay, wouldn't you say? Right, but it was laid out in plain English. We just said, oh, we want to have lives, we want to have a player, we want to have a target. It didn't lay out any kind of structure. Precisely. So let me go ahead and come in here real quick, and I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to draw out my screen again. All right, so the elements that we're going to have, we're going to have a player, and I'm going to represent all of these just as objects as we get deeper and deeper into the world of object-oriented programming. Even in this case, the way we're representing our players is, or well, our different objects is going to be interesting because it's just going to be a very basic WinForms app. We're going to be progressing over to where everything is being handled as true objects that we define from classes. Right. You're going to, well, the idea is to have a player object, whether that be built out of something visual and a Windows form design. Precisely. Or whether we later define that as a class is, is irrelevant at this point. We simply know that we need to have a player object in the sense that it's an object you can see on the screen. Right. So we need a projectile. We need a target, so this is our target object that we're going to be shooting at, and we're going to need a HUD. I'm even going to define this out as an object here. So our heads-up display, but our heads-up display is really going to break down into to two things, if you will. Let me see, how do I want to draw this so I don't I need space here? So it's going to define in a, or be broke down into a start screen. And it's going to be broke down into a lives display. Two different parts. Now, again, please keep something in mind. Even though, of course, Logan and I have already talked about all of this, visualize yourself sitting down with your buddies. Or if you don't have any buddies involved in the design phase of your game, just picture yourself sitting there thinking, all right, what is my game going to be? What is it going to do? Okay, it's going to be a simple fighter, shooter style game that allows you to do the following. Blah, blah, blah. All right, very cool. Design phase. All right, what do we need in this game? Well, we obviously need a player. Projectile. Are you going to have multiple kinds of projectiles? Or are you going to think about that? The target. What kind of enemies are we going to have? Are we going to have multiple kinds of enemies? In our case, a very, very simple game is being designed here. So this is it. This is all that we've got to worry about. So... As a matter of fact, as I'm talking, I just box these in. So just, just think about what is it that you're going to need, okay? All right, now that we have these things in place, let's go ahead and come over here back with our game elements. And I'm going to do this in a very loose way, if you don't mind, Logan. I'm just going to kind of walk through each of the elements and talk a little bit about them. So the player. And, and this is really going to mimic a discussion that you and I had a few days ago downstairs in the office. So what, what can a player do? Well, the player needs to be constrained to the bottom of the screen. So guys, at this point, you really need to listen to what I'm saying because I'm going to use my own invented form of crazy shorthand. So it's going to be uh, basically constrained to the bottom of screen. All right. So that means we know our player is going to appear here at the bottom of our screen. Now, we also would like for it to be able to move, of course, and we're going to have it be able to move left and right with the mouse. 
because we're going to keep this very simple at first. So if I, as I move my mouse left and right, my player is going to move left and right. If I move my mouse up and down, no effect. That's not being uh, built into the design phase right here. Right, because we've just defined that he's constrained. That's constrained right, he's to the constrained. bottom of the screen. Precisely. And one more thing about my player, and that is my left mouse button needs to cause him to fire. So will fire projectile. So that's our trigger. You got it. Now, with the fire projectile, we can put a little asterisk here, making sure that we take a look at the projectile because the projectile himself is going to kind of have some rules. So here we are. Hit the left mouse button. We just fired a projectile. Yes. Now, let's go ahead and look at the projectile because well, it's kind of important since we just mentioned it. So what do we know about this projectile? Here's the key thing. Only one projectile on the screen at a time. So only one on screen. At a time. All right. Only one, you say. A second projectile cannot be fired until the previously fired projectile moves off the screen or strikes the target. So, projectile, for a second one to be fired, projectile must first move off screen or hit target. Either of those two conditions would give us the illusion that the projectile was just destroyed. Does that make sense, Logan? Right. It's, it was destroyed in either collision with the target or simply went off screen and is now out of balance. We don't have a projectile anymore. So the idea there is to limit the refire rate so that if you hit the target over and over again when it's really close, it'll seem like you can fire fast. But if you miss the target, you have to wait until the projectile itself goes off screen before you get to fire again. So it's an element of strategy. You have to watch the projectile, and you can't just fire at will. You have to hold on to the projectile until it's really useful for you. And check this out. Here's what's really cool about it. We didn't want to set the game up in such a way that we could spawn multiple objects that we had to keep track of, not in a very simple game implementation like this. We wanted to be able to just fire one and only one is on the screen, so we didn't have to worry about keeping a list of them. So, what Logan just described is we found a way to bend that into a strategy for the game itself to make it work for us. Right, I mean, I've seen old arcade games that actually employ that as a, a form of difficulty. As a matter of fact, to some extent, I think uh, Centipede does that with the way its projectile works. Wow, it's been so long since I've played that. Does but it really? Yeah, it's where because that's why when you shoot the mushrooms that are really close, you can shoot them really fast. But as things get farther away, you have to wait for the projectile to hit to get it back. Ah. But like you're saying, it does lend itself really well here because, like you said, we don't have to worry about lists of things. We can just focus on a projectile. That's so right. that way we can see, has it been hit, has it gone off screen, and that determines whether or not we can fire at any given time. Precisely. In Volume 2, that's when we're going to begin focusing on spawning multiple objects, and we'll have to start dealing with lists. All right, so the next thing we need to focus on is going to be our target object. That's going to be the guy that's going to spawn. Actually, it's going to spawn right off screen right here. But then it's going to be set into motion, and it's going to be moving in a direction, and it's going to stay moving in that direction consistently. Right. Though that direction itself is random initially. It that's could right. spawn in a uh, random direction. That's why we have multiple arrows. Is this is a few possible paths that the target could take. So the question then becomes, all right, the target, what about it spawning? So it needs to spawn top center. You could even say top center right off the screen, but I'm just going to put top center um, and then moving downwards Moving down with random direction. Simple enough. All right. Now, there's one more thing we need to establish uh, in regards to the target object element, and that is there will never be more than one target on the screen at a given time. So only one 
target on screen. Once again, we're not dealing with lists yet. We didn't want to spawn multiple objects and have to go through and make sure that we are managing all of these objects. We'll get to that. Okay, Keeping the game as simple as possible. And finally, what we want to have is going to be our HUD. And as I said with the HUD, that is simply broke down into our start screen and our lives display. Okay, so this is what we are looking at for the elements portion. So if I was to bring your attention all the way back up here, that's game elements in the design phase. So right now, black and white, let's just pretend this was pencil and paper. We have defined all of the objects that we're going to need in this game. We need a player, we need a projectile, we need a target object, and we need our HUD. And we have uh, laid down some very simple rules for each of these, such as the player being constrained to the bottom, moving left and right with the mouse, and uh, left mouse button acting as our trigger to fire a projectile, but only one projectile on a screen at a given time, unless uh, and firing to repeat only if that first projectile that was fired is off the screen or hits the target. And then, of course, with our target object spawns from the top center, moving downward at a random direction, you can only have one of these on the screen at a time. Our start screen is going to be simply a screen that says something along the lines of, you know, welcome to Canon, click start to begin, something like that. I'm just throwing that out there. And our lives, that's going to end up being a little indication up here of how many lives we have remaining. Simple enough. So, again, that takes care of the game elements design phase. Now we need to define our game rules. So for our game rules, let me go ahead and come in here real quick and just add in another sheet of paper. And then we can hide this one real quick. So for the game rules, let's just talk about them. First rule that we have, player cannot win. You like that, don't you, Logan? I say, wow, what a miserable game. Player cannot win. The target simply moves faster each time the player successfully shoots it. So player hits target. Target respawns and moves faster. So what's going to happen? We're going to get to a point where it's just going to move too fast for us. Okay, We're not going to be able to get to it. So that is the very first thing. The next one, there's not a lot of rules here. The next rule is if the target hits the ground, the bottom of the screen. So if target hits ground. That means we did not hit it in time. In time. So it's hit the ground. What is going to happen? So the player is going to need to lose a life. And the target will respawn. top center and begin moving again. Now, it's not going to move faster. You've missed it. So at this particular level, the only way we're going to penalize you is take a life away. We're not going to make it go faster because you missed it. So it just simply respawns at the top of the screen. All right. So now what happens if we actually hit the target? So that brings us up to our next rule. So if target is hit by projectile. What's going to happen? Okay. So, in this particular case, the target, once again, is going to need to respawn at the top. So, respawn. And I'm just going to say top, center. And its speed increases. So target's speed increases. 
Now, are we keeping track of that? Internally in code we are, but did we specify anything about there's going to be a level on our HUD showing us that, ooh, we're now at level two. Or le nope, nothing like that. It just gets faster if we hit it. That's all. So basically, target is coming down the screen. Tick, 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 tick. Here comes our projectile. Tick, 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 tick. They collide right here. What happens when they collide? The projectile goes away. Our target goes away. Target respawns up at the top and begins moving in another way, and the player is free to once again move and fire another one. Okay, and that's it. It's as simple as that. And then the final game rule that we need to make sure we implement is that if all lives are used, game over. That's it. It's really that simple. So a quick recap of what's going on. First of all, the player cannot win this game, period. If a target gets past the player and hits the ground, let's go ahead and mark this here. So the target hits the ground, player is going to lose a life, and the target simply respawns at the top of the screen. If the target's hit by a projectile, then the target will simply respawn at the top center of the screen and it will move in a random direction with an increased speed. Finally, once all of our lives are gone, the game is over. This defines our simple requirements for the game, along with all of the game elements needed in the design phase, as well as the game rules that are needed. So if I was to come back over here real quick, watch this, something scary. Ah! All right, that was fun. So now... We have our game rules, and did I actually manage to hit something? Let's come over here and give us a right layer to write on. So our game rules, done. So we now have a design phase complete. So we have a requirement in place, we have a design phase, and since we are using the waterfall model of software development, this is now in stone. We can't come back and change this, okay? And I'm happy with this. You happy with this, Logan? Certainly. I mean, we've gone through, we've broken it down into discrete objects that we need to have to represent our game. We need to have a player projectile target and HUD. Right. Then we turn around and we, do, and we laid down the rules for how those objects can move, how they can interact, and what restrictions there are, meaning how, well, how often can you fire and or when can you not fire. Exactly. And also defined on what causes the game to end as well as the rule that uh, you can't actually win, that the game will just run forever until you run out of lives and the game ends. That's right, or you close the window. <laughs> so that is going to wrap up this video where we're just dealing with the requirements and the design phase of the canon game. In the next video, we're going to take a look at our first implementation, the implementation for Canon 1. And this is where we're going to start getting everything organized for coding. So that is going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.